Hello? Yeah. All right. Oh. I think we're, we're on. Here? Yeah. We're live. I think so. All right. So uh, my name is Phil Estes. This is Kyle Mestry. And we're going to be talking to you about uh, networking between containers, VMs, bare metal. Um, Kyle's the networking guy. I'm yeah. the container guy. So we're, we're together we make the awesome, awesome team. I think so. And, yeah. and I just wanted to say also that I'm really disappointed in Angel and Kershaw. They didn't get the memo on the shirt, so I don't know what's yeah. going on. Disappointing anyway. at best. Where is Angel? He's not even here. That's it. He does Okay. Us. We'll get him next time. Go ahead. All right. So um, first, I think uh, I'll give us hopefully uh, what will be a whirlwind introduction to containers. Uh, how many of you have played with containers in any form or fashion? All right. Good. So this isn't uh, brand new to you, but um, I think to kind of connect to, uh, if you were here, Mark Shuttleworth was just here. He spoke at Container World a few months ago, and I thought this was a great way to, to think about containers is that containers are a lie we tell a process. So uh, if you've kind of understood the, the model of containers on Linux, um, unlike VMs, you're simply just starting a process, but you're giving a, a containment model uh, that are a set of namespaces. They're listed out there to the right. The mount namespace network is highlighted because we're going to focus on that in this talk. The user namespace, the PID namespace. Um, and so these containment mechanisms give us the, the, uh, the concept of a container that feels like it's its own system. But obviously, because of this, it's extremely lightweight because it's just another uh, Linux process on your system. It has the same kind of startup time as starting a process. Um, and then, obviously, another benefit. So containers have been around for a very long time. Um, the container technology in the Linux kernel has been there for a long time. But recent uh, ecosystem players like Docker have really added to this model um, this idea of a, a very standardized and simple packaging method for taking this process that I want to put in a, in a container, put all its dependencies, and that really, uh, as we've seen, I think, uh, really had containers taking off in the last couple of years. Um, not to mention that it's a great fit with kind of this cloud era, uh, all the talk around microservices, CI, CD, containers have been a great fit uh, for these um, use cases. Uh, so let's start with a, a bold statement. There's no such thing as Linux container networking because, again, uh, we just talked about containers being a process on your system. Uh, a process doesn't have anything special about it that really re relates to networking other than the kernel has handed us, if we've asked for it, a new network namespace. Uh, all that really means is that we, within that namespace, we have our own list of interfaces and we have our own routing table, which means um, it's really up to me to decide how I'm going to create those interfaces, uh, how I'm going to set up the routing, and that's really up to the implementer of that runtime. So Docker has a way of doing that. Uh, LXD, LXC has a way of doing that. Uh, Rocket has a way of doing that. And we're going to talk about that a little bit. Um, but that kind of sets up, hopefully, if, you, if you're new to containers or, or the concept is new, that gives you an idea of what we're talking about. Um, you know, a Linux bridge is obviously the most sort of default and standard way to do that. That's the original Docker networking style. But today we're going to talk about some more advanced features, and I think at this point uh, Kyle can can yeah. talk about SDN. Yeah, I get to talk about SDN. How exciting is that, right? <laughs> so, so SDN, right? Much like containers, how many people have heard of SDN? Has anyone used it, right? If you've used a script to configure your network devices, maybe that's SDN too. I mean, so so what exactly is it, right? I mean, this is a pretty good uh, pretty good definition here, right? an umbrella term encompassing several kinds of networking technology. It's pretty interesting as well, right? But fundamentally, you know, what is, what is software-defined networking really about? If you look at it from its core, it's about things like operational scale, right? Being able to scale things into huge numbers, whether that's the components of your network, whether they're hardware or physical. So that's really important as well. Agility and speed. Uh, one of the premises of, of, F, of SDN is, is being able to to not only scale this stuff, but, but to, um, to give you more agility and speed as far as your deployments go, 
I mean, it might tie into a CI/CD process as well. All of these things help with that. Um, but then the other thing is maybe moving some of this complexity from hardware to software. Um, and complexity is a funny term, especially when it comes to networking, but, but I think that's part of it as well. So I thought it would be interesting to, to take a look at OpenStack Neutron and some of the abstractions that, that it provides in its API uh, as well. I mean, in a lot of ways, Neutron is SDN as well, especially the APIs it provides because it allows you to do things um, that previously you couldn't uh, with just physical hardware that was easy. So you can create things like this. You can create a network. Um, might be composed of, a, of the virtual network itself, the subnet that's associated with it, and then it has virtual ports. Those are all things that are part of OpenStack Neutron in an OpenStack deployment as well. And then on the top, you have the virtual interfaces associated with the VMs, um, or potentially the containers as well, right? That could be. And those are associated with the virtual machine as well. So all of these abstractions together um, kind of allow you to, to do some interesting things, right? By the way, Phil's a whiz with the slides. These are spectacular. This is good. He, he made my bad slides look this good. This is amazing. So thanks, Phil. This is good. This is, this is what it allows you to do, right? Uh, you could do some interesting things with it. You can build complex topologies with it, uh, private networks. You can tie things together across them. You can put VMs in different places. You can route traffic, set up routers, and, and tie your networks together that way. So it's, it's a pretty interesting thing that it lets you do. Um, the Neutron API also lets you do all this with, with different plugins on the back end, whether that's a core plugin or a driver with uh, the ML2 modular layer 2 plugin. So there's all kinds of interesting things you can do with this as well. Um, this is kind of fundamentally what, what SDN is about, I think. So, so I, thought, I thought it was also interesting that, that we wanted to talk specifically about some of the technology that, that we're excited about uh, at IBM and that we're involved in and that we're really working with upstream. Um, you know, this is all about open source and that. And so we're, you know, we're heavily engaged in working with uh, the Open vSwitch community as well. So how many people know what Open vSwitch is? Most people in the room? How about, wow, not as many. That's good, see? So Open vSwitch is an open source virtual switch. Um, it's, it's uh, you know, it runs on a host or a hypervisor. Uh, the project has been around since 2009, when it was first open sourced as well. Um, so it's almost uh, seven years old, coming up soon. Open vSwitch itself, architecturally, is composed of three things. It has a kernel module, um, which is actually upstream in the Linux kernel at this point. Um, and it also has a, a daemon that runs on the host, which programs flows into the kernel module. And then a local OVSDB server as well on the host. So another piece of technology associated with Open vSwitch, uh, which is a new uh, virtual networking technology, is, is something called Oven, op Open Virtual Networking. Um, so Oven is actually something that provides virtual networking uh, on top of Open vSwitch instances as well. And so essentially what it does is it's going to manage uh, Open vSwitch daemons across um, a bunch of hosts. It adds a local controller agent which runs on the local hypervisors, programming the local, local open vSwitch there. It also adds a centralized uh, set of databases, the north and the southbound database as well, and that's where all of the state is stored. And it does a lot of really interesting things with pushing logical flows around um, back and forth, up and down the systems as well. So Oven was actually announced in January of 2015 by the open vSwitch team. Uh, we've been working on it since then. It's coming along really nicely. Um, we're looking to do an initial first release of this actually in the fall um, as well. And so, let's see, we'll go to the next slide here, which is, so this, this is actually architecturally what the oven architecture looks like. Um, it's pretty simple when you look at it there. You basically have the databases um, at each level there. You also have, uh, in this case we're using OpenStack to drive this, but you can use other CMS systems as well. You could even do something like have Kubernetes drive it. You could have something drive the oven control playing as well. But it's really the key points are those databases as well, and then the, the OVN controllers locally as well. Um, so the northbound database, uh, which is right on the top, the northbound database has, has the logical and the desired state of the network. So whatever the, the CMS, whatever OpenStack Neutron is telling 
oven to, to do, whatever it wants that logical state to be, that's stored in that, that, log, uh, that northbound database over there. And then the southbound database contains the logical pipelines and the flows. So, so NorthD will, will go ahead and convert, convert that logical state of the network into a bunch of logical flows. Uh, that says things like this VM can talk to this VM, and this VM, you know, VMA can talk to VMB, and VMA can talk to VMC, things like that. Those are the logical flows. And then those get pushed down into the oven controller, and then the oven controller will create more complex uh, open flow rules and push those down into OpenV switch itself. Um, so, you know, it's not uncommon, for example, for some of these logical flows with all of these ACLs that it's building and everything like that to see maybe hundreds of thousands of flows uh, on each of these OVS vSwitch uh, daemons at this point. So, so there's, there's a lot of things right there. So, you know, how is this different than the built-in uh, reference implementation that's in Neutron? That's a question we get asked a lot of the times because Neutron has an implementation that looks kind of like this. It replaces the oven controller. Um, the Neutron implementation has a Python agent there as well. There is no northbound database. It's just using the Neutron database. One of the big things that that this provides right off the front is this removes all of the RPC traffic off of the, um, the Rabbit bus in OpenStack. And anyone who's tried to scale OpenStack knows that the Rabbit bus is one of the first things you hit scalability-wise that's a challenge. So that's a huge advantage right there. All that traffic is moved off. It's now using OVSDB to push things around. You can kind of scale that separately. Um, the database you can scale separately. So that's, that's a huge win right there. Um, um, you know, so the other thing is that uh, this, this, this is actually, for us at least, for what we've done, you know, we've seen that this has allowed us to scale pretty high and much higher than, than what we were doing with the reference implementation as well. So we've been pretty happy with that. Um, some, some things that, it, that, it, that this allows, that this supports currently, um, this does L3 routing as well, uh, both distributed routing for IPv4 and soon IPv6. The patches are landing. Um, you can do hardware and software gateways with this as well, so that would be if you want to take these virtual networks and tie them back into physical networks, um, or, or if you want, well, that, that's the main use case for that as well. Um, also, it supports rolling, up gates, be, uh, rolling upgrades because the schema, uh, the, all the databases have a schema, so that's actually pretty important as well, especially if you want to be able to roll this out continuously and update this as well. So that's, that's a pretty huge advantage. All right. Okay. So... Um, so we, we spent a, a very few minutes uh, talking about containers and, and the fact that, uh, in, es in essence, we have a blank slate when it comes to networking uh, for containers on Linux. Uh, Kyle's sort of brought in the, the networking side, the, the sort of deep dive on, on, on OVS and, and Oven. Um, so trying to connect those two worlds, you know, where, where is the ecosystem right now? Well, um, it's important to note that there are more than than one model at the moment. Uh, if you've been following the community, you know that there's CNI, uh, the core, out of the CoreOS AppC project, uh, the container network model, which came via uh, Docker socket plane acquisition uh, that, that LibNetwork implements. And so we're gonna actually talk more about Project Courier, um, but I, we just wanted to make sure that, that obviously this is a changing space. There's a lot right. of, um, churn, so to speak, in an ecosystem that's growing this fast. Uh, but, you know, as far as, as the, the ecosystem players, this is an, an exhaustive list. Uh, but because Docker has enabled this pluggability more than just at the networking layer, uh, you can plug in uh, storage drivers, networking, there's now an authorization plugin. Uh, you can do external graph drivers for the actual storage of your images. Um, but specific to networking, there are currently uh, several players uh, who have plugins available today. You've probably heard of Project Calico, Weave, Flannel, and Oven as well, as, as we've just been talking about, is also uh, pluggable into, into Docker. So a, a very brief overview of Lim Network style of container networking. Um, at this point, the, the concepts are fairly simple. There are networks, there are endpoints, each container has a network sandbox, which of course on Linux is implemented as a network namespace. So I can basically take a container, connect its sandbox as an endpoint into a network so I can do things like back-end, front-end network separation. Uh, obviously, we can do more interesting things, but that's really the, the level of, of the API as it is today and helps um, 
us set up what we're going to talk about with Courier. Yeah, definitely. And I, I think um, it's like Phil said, there's multiple networking models right now. Um, the current Courier work is kind of focused around the lib network work, so the CNM, I think, right? the container yep. networking model. But it's worth noting that that there is a, a spec out here as well. Um, I think I saw Mohammed out here somewhere. He may actually know. There he is over there. He knows more about this than me too. But but there is work going on to support Kubernetes, the CNI as well inside Courier as well. Right. But but we'll, we'll take a step back and say, um, you know, what is Project Courier? Because it's worth talking about that as well. Project Courier is a new OpenStack project that was created within the last year, and it implements a lib network plugin uh, for Docker's lib network. And the interesting thing about that is, is that it, it ties into the Neutron APIs, translating the Docker APIs over to Neutron. And so what it does is it allows you to take your existing, that's pretty, that's pretty <laughs> loud. I don't know what's, I hope, I hope the other guy is winning too, but I hope that. Anyways, it allows you to translate, uh, it allows you to utilize your existing Neutron infrastructure um, and use it with containers. So an obvious initial use case is something like, you know, you could think of you have an OpenStack cloud with, with Neutron running, uh, with Neutron API access out there. Someone uh, could, could get Courier going, utilizing Keystone with their credentials and the Neutron API access, um, and they could then spin up uh, whatever they wanted with Docker, Docker containers, Docker Swarm, and they can tie it into their existing implementation. And lo and behold, their VMs and their containers can now talk. And this works with, you know, a multitude of different Neutron plugins that are available today as well. So it's... It's pretty interesting and it's pretty exciting stuff here. Um, did you want to talk about this a bit? Or want, well, go so, ahead. Yeah. Okay, so we'll talk about this, right? So Docker to Neutron, the mapping. What do we have here, right? So, so Phil had the slide up that talked about the Docker uh, CNM model and what it is, um, and then we also talked about the Neutron one. And the reason we kind of did all that was so we could tie it together here and show you what what maps to what here. So on the CNM side, uh, you can see uh, on the left there, you know, a network maps over to a Neutron network. Uh, an endpoint uh, maps over to a Neutron port. The IPAM layer in Lib Network and the CNM maps over to a Neutron uh, subnet. And then the join and leave events are actually translated over to plug and unplug. Um, and the interesting thing there is that that requires some code uh, uh, to actually do the plug and the unplug over there. Um, but you can see that things map uh, fairly nicely across between the two. So it, it works pretty good. So, you know, we've already talked about this a bit, but uh, as our little pirate friend there would say, there are some advantages to using Courier, right? I mean, the biggest one is you can use your existing Neutron install. So if you're someone who's already installed OpenStack, who's already using OpenStack and they're using Neutron, you can offer that up to container people and they can utilize that, that networking layer and tie containers and VMs together as well. Um, and you know, the other interesting thing is you can actually also tie it together with bare metal and with Ironic as well. Um, because if you integrate Ironic with Neutron as well, now you've kind of tied everything together, which is pretty slick. So yeah, if you want to get ready for the, yeah. the demo. Um, so we'd like to show you uh, how some of this works, but, but just yeah. briefly before that, you know, so what does this mean for IBM? Kyle has already mentioned that IBM is involved in these, in these projects. Um, some of the contributors are here in the room. Um, you know, so we have our Bluemix public cloud. Hopefully many of you have heard of that. We have a container service built around Docker containers. That's running on OpenStack today. And Neutron is providing that network layer for our containers today. We're now working on our next generation. And again, our work on Courier is beneficial to that because we want this unified networking access across these substrates. Um, and then we can exploit some of these improvements to OVS and Oven. Uh, through that. So uh, definitely, you know, we see value in these projects, uh, not just for the open source, but also to enable our own platform. Definitely, yeah. So I think uh, uh, let's see. Kyle is going to show us some let's great stuff. We'll see what we can do. Live demos, right? Let's see what we can do. So we thought it would be interesting to, to actually show this. Um, obviously, the easiest way for us to do that was we have a simple dev stack VM running here. Um, I'm going to try to... to to, to walk through the demo, and Phil's going to try to explain what's going on, and we'll, we'll show you how sure. everything kind of connects together, utilizing, you know, Neutron and OpenStack CLIs, as well as uh, the Docker CLI. That's yep. what we're going to do. So, let's see. The first thing we're going to do is we will go ahead and create a network here, um, a Neutron network. Let's just call that, uh, you know, CourierNet, for lack of anything else. That wasn't very exciting, but, you know. 
let's go ahead and create uh, let's go and uh, create a subnet and maybe it's worth mentioning that that courier in its current uh, form can either so Kyle's creating a network but also if you use the dot work docker network create and specify the driver as courier it will do these steps for you so either way you can either exploit right. an existing neutron network or create a new one via courier right exactly so that's what we'll show you so right now we have uh, Right now, we, we created the, the second network here, this, this courier net down here. We just gave it a random CIDR at this point. Um, so now, you know, if we look at, at the Docker network commands, um, these are just the default ones uh, that Docker creates. We don't have a, a courier uh, with the courier driver here. We don't have one of those created yet. So let's go ahead. Um, the first thing we'll do is, like Phil said, we'll create a courier network or a network on a lib network network, Docker network, Docker network, Docker network. We'll create a Docker network that maps to the existing Neutron network, and we'll right. show, you, show you how that works here. So um, let's do driver equals courier. Give it the IPAM driver as well. So courier is, we're specifying that it'll also do the IP address management, which if anyone was in Tokyo and Mohammed and I actually gave a talk, at that point I don't think the IPM driver was complete, but in uh, the current version of Courier that we're using, we specify Courier to handle the IPM uh, address assignment. And this is a test to see how well, yeah, how well we Kyle can, types. Yeah, especially I was going to try So to this is where we're specifying that, that instead of creating a new Neutron network, we're going to use an existing one that Kyle's already created. And let's see if I have any typos. Beautiful. Oh, look All at right. that. So let's see. Docker Network LS. You can see it was created there. We can do a neutron net list to show how it maps over. Oh, we already had that, actually. That wasn't very exciting. Let's do a Docker Network Inspect. And Phil can... Uh, can walk us through that on there on the screen. Sure. So, so this is just asking Lib Network about a network name that we specified. We can see here that the driver is correct. We've used Courier, also supporting IPAM through Courier. We have no containers attached to it, but it it is linked to this Neutron Net with the same name. Yeah, definitely. So, so now let's. So we've shown you that. Let's let's create a, a Docker network now that will then go and create the equivalent Neutron network sure. as well. So we can show you that. Uh, Docker network uh, create. Um, actually, you know what? I'm going to cheat and do this. Let's just call this. Sure. Uh, let's get rid of this so we're not specifying an existing one. And uh, I think we'll want to change the IP range. Exactly. Or it could be exciting. Yeah, that uh, we definitely want to do so, that. Oh, that would actually work though, right? Because these would be these are private networks, sure. so yeah, we could true. do that. Let's uh, not confuse the let's crowd. Let's do that. Sean looks confused already. He's always confused. <laughs> there we go. Docker container. There we go. Look at that. All right. So neutron Oof. net list, and, and we'll let's show that courier actually. Created a uh, less exciting name, but right um, so the without, interesting thing is, you can see it. You know, it takes the first part of the UUID here, and, right, and it creates the name correct. to map it across that way. So all right, so we should stuff. do something so, more exciting and connect I think we, some things to I this. I think we can do that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's do that while we're while we're here. Let's do uh, let's let's look at some let's. Uh, Let's do some. Let's boot something here. So let's in this window here. Let's uh, let's boot a VM. Uh, let's do this here. We'll boot a VM in this one. Let's go up here and grab. Uh, we'll, we'll use this this one that was auto created here. Okay. So we'll boot the VM over here. We'll let that boot up while it's going on. Um, then over here, let's do the same thing, uh, except over here, let's get a container up and running. How about uh, sure. dash, 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 uh, net? So the way that you specify a network, very simple, dash, dash, net equals, and the network name from one of the 
networks that already exist. And libnetwork, if that's a courier network, will obviously use courier, courier's plugin to actually do that work to connect that endpoint to the sandbox like we had shown. The container came up before the VM in case anyone was curious. <laughs> I, I don't know, maybe no one was. Okay. So you can see we got, you know, an IP address here. Right. Um, that's interesting. So let's go over here now. Um, let's take a look at uh, the Neutron ports as well. That's a lot of ports. It's going to cause me some issues. I think this is the one we just looked at. I think that's the, the IP address, 10104. Yeah. Yep. It is. So that's our container. So that's there. So now we have, uh, if I could type. We'll see. So we'll see. We'll take a look at the, at the Nova VM. So the VM's running as well. Uh, let's, let's take a look at uh, the console log, make sure the VM made it all the way up. Looks like it made it all the way up, right? Um, what was that IP address again over there? Three. I think it was three, right? Yeah. So in theory now, this is the container. Um, so we should be able to, to ping across there. And look at that. Another ping demo success. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you. I, Thank you. Yeah, we we were we were going to do something much more exciting, but the challenges of nested virtualization, or you know, and, and yeah. all of that sort of that's just an excuse. Actually, we really wanted to do something, but but pings are cool nonetheless. So the other interesting thing you could do is you you in theory could also look at creating multiple networks and hooking up neutron routers between them and things like that. Um, so that's that's all definitely really good. Um, I believe there's also uh, Mohammed. There's a courier talk. Or that already happened. Tomorrow, tomorrow at 9 a.m. there's a talk on career. Tomorrow at, uh, no, Thursday at, Thursday I want to say, I want to say 150, but I might be wrong. There's an oven talk as well. Um, there's an oven boff session tomorrow at two something. So there's a, still a lot of content available and a lot of the technology that we kind of have demoed today if people are interested in more of a deep dive uh, on some of this stuff as well. So, oh, oh we have to, we got to go back to the, yeah. Yeah, you yeah. got to do the charts. We got to go back, yeah. Oh, no. There it is. Look at that. Much better. Uh, okay, that's the demo. Oh, there we go. All right. Yeah. Questions? So, <laughs> we are, we're awesome, awesome. Yes. Yeah. That's our thing. If, if anyone wants to make this a meme on Twitter or help keep it going, you guys? Yeah. yeah. Dan, could you get yeah. that? It's already gone. All right, oh, good. Good. Okay. I think this will get wearisome after another 30 seconds, but are there any questions? I could watch this all day. I don't know about the rest of you, but it's just fascinating. It's... Anyone else? Yeah, someone must have some questions. Yeah, yeah, we've got a mic here and here. Or challenge Kyle to more typing. He could yeah. maybe show other oh, things. Oh, we've got a question. Look at that. Thank you. Oh, the microphone isn't on? Is Do that... we have volume? Volume. No? Help is on the way. Yep, here comes someone. We got it. Oh, hold on one sec. He's right there. We got it. Oh, look at that. Nope, not yet. Let, let him get oh, back. Oh, he's going back. He's going to, there it is. <laughs> this is, this is going to be good when it finally. Oh, I hear volume. Go ahead. Hello? There it is. Yes. Um, Maybe it was evident to everybody else, but you showed two ways, and you were also kind of showing how the whole Docker interface and the OpenStack interface converges. Uh, but my question is, uh, what's the value of the, the Docker interface? Is it just purely illustrative, or what you're essentially, I'm, I'm assuming that you're trying to say is you can just use the Neutron interface to configure your Docker networking, but it's actually it's actually the reverse, right? You use the, the Docker stuff to drive the creation of the Neutron networks there. So in other words, Courier is a client of the Neutron API. Right. Think of it that way. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So Neutron isn't driving the creation of, of of the Docker stuff. I mean, if you're creating Docker networks, you're doing it with uh, the Docker CLI, actually, and then that's just creating the constructs on the Neutron side because Neutron is actually whatever backend implementation you have. Right. In this case, Oven, that's actually what's implementing the virtual networking. Well, I guess in, then in my yeah. question is, could you not do it the other way around? Could you not? Yeah, uh, create the Docker networks using the Neutron interface, using uh, the Oven. So, I, I, yeah. if yeah. I understand yeah. correctly, I, th I think I understand the question. So, given you might have that lower level knowledge that Docker's container just has a network namespace, you could obviously do some insertion using external tooling. In fact, 
uh, I don't want to get too far in the weeds, but the Open Container Initiative has a project called Run C, which Docker now uses Run C to start containers. It's like the execution engine at the operating system level. Run C has hooks, and you can actually have a pre-start hook that, that many people who use Run C without Docker have scripts that do the networking component. So yes, at that point, you could call out to Neutron. In this case, if, if someone's comfortable with the Docker interface, then they need to have a lib network plugin. So they need something that marries those two worlds. Courier and lib network happen to be that, what we've shown here. Is it required? Absolutely not. You could write your own interface. But for the Docker world, this is the proper way to interface with what they've already put together in lib network. So, yeah. Yep. So, question over here. Yeah. Uh, current implementations of some some IPAM controllers or drivers uh, do a lot of damage to Neutron. They they take a lot of functionality out of Neutron that uh, some network teams that I'm working with don't like. Uh, how does Courier interface with the IPAM? Uh, you know, and how you know is it is it working more like the native Neutron service, which is what you know, our folks want. Right. But we want also on the uh, IP engineering side to know where our IPs are, what right. networks they're on, et cetera. Yeah, so. it's making use of the Neutron IPAM. So that, that's what it's using. So it will use, like the demo, it was using just the default Neutron uh, IPAM uh, implementation as well. In theory, and Mohammed can correct me if I'm wrong, but if you are using a different pluggable IPAM layer, um, that should work as well because it's just utilizing all the internal APIs for that. So. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Go ahead. For OVS and OVN, uh, when they consume from Rabbit, or well, not consume from Rabbit, but when they uh, when the RPC calls get offloaded to yeah. their handlers, uh, are those like stored in the database and uh, comparable to how uh, the like the event driven uh, different states and stuff like that gets pushed to Rabbit? Is it like are they comparable? Is it like a whole other set of data that it collects? So that's actually really interesting, and uh, that's a good question. Uh, there are some people here at the break that will be able to answer that in much more detail. But, but essentially what you Ryan. can think of it is, yeah, yeah, Ryan's over here, yeah. We'll talk to Ryan afterwards, but I'll give you a quick summary, and Ryan can give you the details, right? So essentially, this is pushing down, the, right now it pushes down the entire state down to all of the controllers and that. There's a lot of work going on to, to kind of optimize that, so it only needs to get, uh, for example, logical flows that are relevant for that specific hypervisor and things like that. Um, but yeah, it's, 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 it's done doing a, 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 well, and right now there's no, there's a lot of optimization going on there. You should definitely talk to Ryan after this. Okay, thanks. Yeah. I uh, just don't wanna let you guys off too easy. Preferred container runtime, LXD or Docker? <laughs> I'll let well, Phil answer that. I mean, our container service is currently aligned with Docker. That's what we built it on. Um, uh, we are, Currently, I'd say designing our next generation, and um, I don't think we're considering changing out our underlying runtime, but we're definitely looking at Kubernetes, Swarm, and considering the proper you know, orchestration layer to put on top of that with Run C. Some of that becomes pluggable now, uh, but at this point, you know, we're continuing with a, a Docker runtime. Excellent. Okay, and, oh, one other question, yeah. Yeah, yeah we have time. Yeah. What is the relationship uh, with? with Gluon. Gluon. Ah, yeah, so there's no relation. No relation. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, if I understand Gluon correct, and you'd, you'd have to talk to the Gluon folks, it, it's agnostic of controller anyway. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yes, one more. Uh, this was more of an uh, integration of Docker with Neutron. So how about the Nova? Like, for instance, I want my container to be available on a specific uh, hypervisor. And uh, so how, how these could be achieved? So is that... Uh, do, you, do you mean yeah. placement kind of yeah, concepts? Yeah, because or? A container would, like, container networking would have, uh, like, a lot of issues, uh, which is called as uh, noisy neighbors. Like, yeah. if those are, like, I want my specific... Uh, Hypervisor should contain uh, those set of containers and not the other because there might be some other VMs which requires a specific more information or more resources on the other hypervisor. 
So I want to avoid those issues of noisy neighbors when it comes to container networking. So how, how do you guys plan to achieve those? Those are good, those are, those are good questions. questions. So number one, I would say, uh, um, this actually gets into a much broader question, philosophical question that the entire OpenStack Foundation is, you know, is looking at, and you've probably seen it as you've been here. You know, where do containers fit into all of this? Um, so number one, I think that discussion is ongoing. Number two, Magnum is currently the way to deploy bays, uh, and they have bays that support, if I'm not mistaken, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but Kubernetes and Docker Swarm, and Mesos, possibly Mesos, Mesos, I think. Mesos. Yeah, mm -hmm. so they have that capability. Um, um, and so that, that would be handled there. But, but then there's a, the other option is, I mean, you in theory could just run the containers on either your ironic bare metal nodes yourself or on the VMs that you spin up yourself. I mean, in that sort of scenario, you're, you're dealing with that problem yourself with whatever orchestration engine you have on top. Yeah, I mean, I think orchestration and concept of labels, you know, whether it's affinity with other containers or, or anti-affinity, I think that's probably the layer at which that has to drive then networking decisions. Yeah. I don't know if the solution is sort of at this layer, probably more at, at how you're going to place and orchestrate those. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Definitely. Well, if, if there's no other questions, I I think we're done. Yeah. And I think there was, you know, wasn't there Nate was going to be here with... Where, where's he's given where's a talk, trusty Nate? He's with, given a talk next oh, door. Oh, look at that. There he is. So, Nate, do we... You know, the raffle. Should we do the it's raffle? It's time for the raffle. Sorry, IBMers. No iPad for you. <laughs> sure, yeah, let's do that. So we'll draw. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Oh, yeah, everyone get your ticket in. Yep. <laughs> Alex has the bucket. If anyone needs to drop their slip in. Here it goes. Yeah, sure. Yeah, for sure. I, no. Which one? Oh, which? Uh, there's also free. There's also free drinks. If anyone, anyone like beer and soda? Yeah. Beer is good. Nate, where's the beer? Back in the corner is the beer. Kyle's beer. Sorry. Yeah. No. We got. One mic. Anyone wants to talk networking and neutron? Uh, Ryan, Matt, you guys raise your hand. Yeah, actually. Oh, Mi Martin's here. I saw Mickey over there. Mohammed. This, this is Where Kyle's is everybody? networking team. Yeah. Think Dustin's Kyle over there. Henry owns the networking team, so maybe. Yeah. One of them could. Yeah. Oh yeah, go talk to those guys over. They will answer. Yeah. Matt, Matt, come here. Over here. Bring Martin with you. These guys will answer your questions right here. Yeah, in the blue shirt right there. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna draw the, for the iPad here. Did you mix them up? I'll look over this way. Oh yeah. Just wanted to understand like looks like similar to what like. Okay, you got it. Oh, one more. There we go. Okay, mix them up. I'm not looking. Oh, one more. Here it is. One more. Yeah. Okay, ready. Okay, if we're going in. Let's see. Here it is. Okay, here we go. Let's see. Sean Roberts from Cisco. Congratulations. Look at that. Nice. There you go. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Oh yeah, definitely. You got the We got to sorry, we got to get you in the picture here with the winner too. Hold that up. There you go. All right, now give me one goofy shot. Goofy, goofy. There we go. We got it. Appreciate it, guys. Hey, nice. Thanks. Yeah. Yep. Thank you.